see if I can find some light. All right. Blessed love, everyone. So I'm doing this as a live and I'll post it so, you know, we can talk about it afterward and it will be there. But I really wanted, especially, you know, the moon rising up, we're just coming out of the full moon vibe. Just some reflections. I'm going to be doing a series of talks at the University of the West Indies um, in the coming weeks. The first one will be tomorrow. And the next one will be the following week. We're starting off with what they call a reggae talk. But it's really a groundings, you know. And one of the things I wanted to share with was the idea of... I've been teaching um, yoga for almost 10 years now. And there's so many things that I learned about myself by having to serve in this way. And it's interesting. As a reggae musician, there's a tradition of... Yeah, reggae make you feel good, you know, and feel good music. But there's also this parallel tradition of suffering and singing about suffering and being able to relate to you know feelings of life hard and babylon wicked and you know woe is me almost and solidarities are important thing and we can pull solidarity around the idea of we're you know a collective struggle and um and with our history that's understandable you know as a people, the diaspora, we have gone through great, like, collective trauma. And a lot has been done to shift that. But there's still a lot of residual trauma that we face every day because of, you know, especially people living in, quote-unquote, first world countries who still have to operate, you know, off of a minority principle, who still every day face the idea that, somebody can take away something you have and you have no recourse or somebody can kill your child and these are real things that are happening like these things are happening and how do we deal with them how do we deal with adversity what is the attitude we're going to have toward the, the hard things that we face are we victims is that the mentality we want to have are we overcomers or are we you know, on a journey, carving out our own path in this world. Because for me, every journey is unique. I truly believe that. I find myself here living an unprecedented life where I'm not following anybody's example. The, the steps that I'm taking in my personal life, in my business, in how I'm approaching this music industry... Is a little different from anything that I've seen. But I'm kind of allowing it to shape me as I shape it. And I see the context I live in as a black woman, as a, you know, as an African woman. And as a reggae artist and understanding that there are struggles that others are facing. So am I being selfish or insensitive if I don't want to talk about the struggle anymore? Am I being insensitive if I want to focus on the positive things? I don't think so. I think it's really important to be an example of dealing with adversity with grace and peace. Because what if our adversities are actually an opportunity for us to get closer to the Most High? What if these things happen to shift our focus and remind us that this superficial world isn't really the work? The real work is evolving in your spirit so that no matter which way the pendulum swing you can maintain your peace when it's extreme joy you can hold on to it and be gracious with it and still find humility in the midst of your highest joy and when the pendulum swing to the other extreme you can have peace knowing that this is a time for me to draw closer to the most high because things outside seem difficult like it may sound you know it may seem like, oh, you know, it's easier said than done. Yes, it is. But what are you doing that's more important? Yeah, making money. Trust. You see, if you know how to make money, learn certain skills of self-governance. Meaning, governing your thoughts, protecting your mind space, preserving your energy, being very mindful and intentional with how you share of yourself giving without anticipating receiving like giving for the the, the 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 reward of giving all of these things like if you can apply these principles on top of your world skills and hustling skills 
it will expand your life in such a powerful way. And I say these things because, I mean, I've been practicing certain principles for decades. And, it, I mean, some of these things, like being in the reggae music industry, you know, it really does make some things harder. Because, yeah, like any in music industry in general, you know, it's a, it's a, it requires you to pay attention to the outside world in a way that I am not used to and I don't particularly love. But I understand that it's a part of the work. So it's not my favorite part of the work, but it's an important part of the work. So while I have to interact in this way, I feel where I am now as a grown woman that I want to represent love and peace and joy and an alternative to considering suffering. And as a yoga teacher, which is where we started with the conversation, I think it's crucial to understand that suffering is a choice. Oh my gosh, she said that. Yeah, imagine that. Sit with that. Before you resist, really sit with that. Suffering is a choice. Because it's your perspective that governs how you're going to look at a situation. And if you are able to, be, to evolve in your emotional intelligence and your spiritual cultivation, so much so that even in the hardest of times, you are able to find why is this happening to me? Why am I reacting this way? Why did I need this? Yeah, even that. Even why did you need this in any situation? Then it becomes less of I am a victim. Somebody is doing this to me. And more, hmm, if I learn this, the next time an opportunity or a situation like this comes up, I will be prepared. Because every time expansion is about to happen, it feels like a storm. So it will reach a point where when adversity come, it's almost like it, it, it creates an excitement within you. So you can face it like, hello adversity, I'm ready for you. And you see when you conquer it, when you reach the other side and maintain your grace and your composure and even throw in a little bit of happiness and service in the midst of your laws, yeah man, the reward is great. This I know from experience. And I am a, trust me, I am a work in progress. Like... I have so much more to go in terms of my patience and my my kindness even. Yeah, because I'm not comparing myself to other people. I'm comparing myself to what I have in my mind. And I have some angelic parents and grandparents who, no matter how you think me, I realize these people are cut from a different cloth. So the bar is very high when it comes to kindness and service. But when they are doing a little part, and I just wanted to take a moment to share with you, you know? These are some of the notes I make to myself. I spend only part time I talk to myself. And I just wanted to share with you that sometimes it is perspective that governs how you handle a situation and what the outcome is. And sometimes adversity is a teacher. Well, it's always a teacher, but sometimes it brings reward. Sometimes it's a test that you must pass. Yeah? We have to move from good and bad and left and right and kind of just try and find the balance just find your center so that no matter what comes whether it's the heights of joy or the heights of adversity you can observe be aware and still be grateful for the life that you have which allows you to even have that experience so yeah man humility govern the thing wisdom courage to all of you more strength more wisdom more courage let us be a little more gentle with ourselves. Let us be a little more gentle with each other. Yeah? I feel like this is the true message of reggae music because this is the true message of His Imperial Majesty. And as far as I am concerned, reggae music is all about the king. Even when his name no call, it exists because there is a one who trod earth with peace as his primary objective. I, I try to do the same thing. Hopefully you will find value in these words. Blessed love, until next time. No respect. So, reggae talk tomorrow. N1, Yui. That's Neville Hall Lecture Theatre, 6.30. We could have some conversations. We could see how we can build a bridge to just feeling better, you know? Yeah, man. Gratitude and love. No respect. Give that.